Ladies and gentlemen, this is your WWE NXT review on Thursday afternoon, March 25th, 2021. I am Joseph Conlon, and we are here today to review last night's episode of NXT on the USA Network. Uh, we are, I believe, 13 days away until the two-night NXT TakeOver Stand and Deliver show. Um... And it's coming along very nicely um, last night. Last night was actually a really good show. I really liked last night's show. And there's a lot to look forward to at TakeOver and on the Go Home show, which is going to be next week. So it's going to be a good one here today on the channel. I thank you guys for joining me and my co-host, of course, here today. You already know him. Ladies and gentlemen, Cameron Johnson. Cam, how are you today, man? I know I know it's a big day. Today is the NBA trade, trade deadline, but we're here to talk about NXT for a couple minutes. So, how are you, man? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Uh, I'm doing great. I'm glad we have a good show to talk about tonight. I thought last night was a big bounce back from the uh, previous two weeks and uh, the bill. And uh, this takeover card looks ex. This takeover card looks excellent. And uh, I'm ready when you are. I'm ready, man. Let's just, just like last night's review, we're going to dive into it. Um, really nothing much segments. It was basically wrestling, wrestling, wrestling for the two hours it was. The, really, the real talking segment at the end was the contract signing. And when we get to that, my goodness. I don't know about you, but... Last night's contract signing, just a, a quick teaser for you guys. Last night's contract signing with Kyle O'Reilly and, and uh, Adam Cole might have been one of my favorite contract signings that WWE has ever done. What do you think? I agree with you there. I think I agree with you there. I agree with you there. This contract signing was excellent. This is an excellent contract signing, and this the bill towards Kyle O'Reilly and yeah. Adam Cole continues to impress. He continues to impress, and Adam Cole and Kyle O'Reilly continue to show you why this is the true main event. I think the true draw of the NXT Takeover. Absolutely. So we're gonna start at the top here. But if you guys have not already, make sure you go check out last night's AEW Dynamite review here on the channel. We talk about Kenny Omega, Matt Seidel. The Young Bucks turning down on Kenny Omega. The TNT title match between John Silver and Darby Allen, And all of the things that happened on last night's Dynamite show. So if you have not already, make sure you go check that out last night. I very much appreciate that. But we started off the NXT show with a women's tag team match. With Dakota Kai and Raquel Gonzalez against Io Shirai and Zoe Stark. Who... She is getting a lot of TV time lately, and I'm glad to see that because we already seen we've seen Rhea Ripley on Raw this past Monday, and these NXT women they're gonna go like this, man. They're gonna go really fast. Io Shirai, I have a feeling her days in NXT are numbered. Dakota Kai, we talked about that last week or the week. I, yeah, I think it was last week. So to see a young a young talent like uh, Zoe Stark get this much TV time. It makes me really happy to see that. And she had she had some offense in here. Uh, eventually, she did take the pin to Raquel Gonzalez after a, uh, I believe, a sidewalk choke slam. This was a decent tag team match, in my opinion. After the match, Io Shirai stares down with Raquel Gonzalez. Dakota Kai then gets behind Io Shirai. Shirai takes out Kai, and then Raquel Gonzalez attacks Io Shirai, slams her on the announce table. She did not go through the announce table, but she clearly sent a message to Io Shirai. Now, this weekend, it was broke by NXT. I think Saturday, th this past Saturday, they announced the main event for night one, and then Sunday, they announced the main event for night two, and Saturday... Is, uh, the first night on Wednesday is going to be actually headlined by Io Shirai and Mikel Gonzalez. And thinking about it, I am actually okay with this idea because 
Raquel has been had a rocket strapped to her for a very long time now. And you can tell that Triple H and Shawn Michaels, they are very invested in Raquel Gonzalez. And I think this is her biggest match of her career. And it's against Theo Shirai, who's one of the biggest wrestlers in the world. So I am actually okay with the w women main eventing the first night of TakeOver. But I want to get your thoughts on this, Mr. Johnson. The match, the opening match on NXT and the announcement this past weekend of Raquel Gonzalez and Io Shirai main eventing the first night of TakeOver, Stand and Deliver. Uh, well, for the, uh, for the first night uh, for the main event, I'm shocked this is the main event. I thought they would have put Tommaso Ciampa uh, and Walter in that spot, which is a bit of a spoiler alert. You know, it's a bit of a spoiler. Be Ciampa and Walter. I thought I thought they were gonna. I thought they would have put that match in the main event, but uh, I don't have a problem with this match main eventing. You know, Raquel Gonzalez has been has been being built up for over a year, you know, for close to a year. Io Shirai has done pretty much everything there is to do in NXT. And so Io Shirai putting over Rico Gonzalez in the main event, I think that's a pretty solid plan. Plus, this match is going to be excellent. I have no doubt about that at all. Uh, Rico Gonzalez uh, has been uh, impressive with her matches. Io Shirai, she's Io freaking Shirai. So uh, I don't have a problem with this being the main event. Uh, should be pretty good. Should be great. And then your thoughts on the uh, the opening match with uh, the tag team match? Uh, I thought the opening match was good. Uh, I like. I thought the opening match was good. Uh, I think Zoe Starks has been a nice addition to this NXT Women's Division. She has really impressed me a lot. And I like one thing that NXT does well that I like that they do is NXT. I like when they it with NXT. I like how they just seamlessly rotate tag teams or other superstars into the brand, you know, into the brand when they have a feeling that some of these women are going to get caught up. You know, when they have a feeling that some of these stars are going to get caught up. You know, I like the fact that they take, you know, I like the fact that they can just uh, seamlessly transition other superstars stars, other competitors, into these roles here. And Zoe Starks is going to have a big... I think Zoe Starks is going to be a big name in the NXT Women's Division so far. I like her. Or I like the addition of Zoe Starks in the division. I think she's really good. Uh, I thought this was a solid match here. You know, I thought this was a solid match here. Raquel and Dakota get the win. Uh, Bills up Raquel uh, Gonzalez even more for Io Shirai. Uh, good stuff. Yeah, absolutely. So now we're going to move on to the next match, which... I thought this would ma this match would take place on one of the nights of TakeOver. Uh, Bronson Reed versus LA Knight. It actually took place um, last night on NXT. And they had a pretty good match together. LA Knight, I thought for sure, was going to get the win. But I'm actually glad Bronson Reed got the win with uh, his big uh, tsunami splash. Uh, I, lo I love his finisher, by the way. Um, but... I'm actually a little surprised that uh, Bronson Reed got the win here. I don't know if they're going to have another match and LA Knight's going to get the win that time, that time around. But Bronson Reed gets the win over LA Knight just to give him a little bit of more momentum. And who knows where they're going, but I am a fan. I, I'm glad that uh, Bron they had uh, uh, LA Knight put over Bronson Reed. I think LA Knight... I think he's just there to elevate new stars. He's there to elevate a Bronson Reed, a Cameron Grimes, Kushida. He's there to elevate the young talent. I don't think he really needs to be getting a push. And I like that he put over Bronson Reed here. So overall, I thought this was good. I had a pretty good match as well. Uh, what do you think about uh, Bronson Reed getting the big victory over LA Knight? Uh, I'm shocked that uh, it didn't surprise me that Bronson Reed beat LA Knight. I thought that was going to be the outcome. Uh, what shocked me is that they gave this match away for free on television. I thought this was going to be added to the takeover card, uh, just like you did, uh, to be perfectly honest with you. But I'm glad Bronson Reed got the win here. Uh, to me, Bronson Reed has more upside than LA Knight, so it made sense to give, uh, you know, it may, uh, Bronson, uh, you know, uh, for, to me, Bronson Reed has. Uh, he has more upside than LA Knight, so it makes sense 
for Braun Surrey to get this win here. So it made sense for Braun Surrey to get this win here. Uh, LA Knight doing what I think he should be doing, putting over the newer talent. And uh, if Braun Surrey doesn't, if he is a North American champion by the end of 2021, then uh, I think something is wrong with it. And then uh, I think NXT is doing something wrong because Braun Surrey is going to be a star. He is going to be a huge star. I think if he's booked right. I love Ronson Reed. I love the big guy. You know, he's a big guy. You can work. Uh, he has a beautiful, uh, he has a beautiful top road splash. Best big man, you know, best, probably the best splash off the top rope in the business, I'd say, or at least for a big guy. So, uh, Bronson Reed, I think, is going to be a huge star. And uh, this doesn't shock me here. Bronson Reed should have won this match against that the late night. Yeah, I, have, I actually have something to say about uh, Bronson before we move on here. Um, I did not like him at first. I thought he was very, I thought he was dull. I thought he had no charisma and he was just, to me at first, he was boring. When he first debuted and he came on TV and like, you know, this guy really doesn't do anything for me. And then they put him in the North American title match around NXT TakeOver 30 and he did some really good stuff there. He beat I think he beat like Roderick Strong and Finn Balor in the triple threat match to get to the takeover match like uh, in August. And a after that, I mean, he works very good matches. We've seen him in matches, I think, with the likes of um, Karrion Cross. I don't think he's wrestled Finn Balor before one-on-one, -on -one, but um, he wrestled Cameron Grimes. And now he wrestled uh, LA Knight last night. And I, I don't th I don't know if we get Bronson as the champion by the end of the year because I just think there's a lot of guys up there like Dexter Loomis. I think he's obviously going to be the next champion, but you got to think uh, a guy like Kevin Grimes, his time is going to be coming up soon. So I mean Bronson Reed, he I hope he's down there for a long time in NXT, but uh, his time will come I think, and he's doing. He's doing good things right now, and I'm happy that um, he got the win over L.A. Knight. Next, we had Karrion Cross against Oni Lorcan. Now, before we talk about the match, uh, last week, Danny Birch, he separated his shoulder in that uh, unnecessary tag team title match against Balor and Cross. I am still angry that the match happened, and I'm even more angry... Because now Danny Birch hurt himself, and him and Oni had to relinquish the tag team championships. And now Oni Lorcan is back to doing what he usually was doing, and that is putting other people over. So um, I feel bad for Danny Birch, but because they're hurt, we are now getting a uh, we're getting a tag team title match, a, a three way. With uh, there we go. I had I had notifications pop up on my phone, but uh, now we're getting a three-way at Takeover Send and Deliver on the first night with MSK, Grizzled Young Vets, and Legato Del Fantasma. Should be awesome, man. Should be an awesome match. So, what do you think about uh, Oni and Danny relinquishing the titles and the triple threat match happening at uh, Takeover? Uh, I think it absolutely, uh, I feel bad for Danny Birch. I do, I feel bad for him. You know, he was, I feel bad for Danny Birch. You know, Danny Birch and Oni Lorcan, they were, they were in NXT for such a long time. They finally get the tag team titles. Uh, even though they weren't really doing much as tag team champions, they finally get the tag team titles. And now Danny Birch, and, you know, and, and, you know, now they read the news that Danny Birch is out injured. I feel bad for the guy. I do, I feel bad for the guy. Oni Lorcan is right back in his role here. Uh, this surprised me the fact that they vacated the titles because I because I don't see any reason as to why you just couldn't put Pete Dunn uh, in place of Danny Burch since those three were since, since those three were a stable. I don't know why you couldn't put you know I just don't know I just don't know why they didn't put Pete Dunn in that spot. But I feel bad for Danny Burch nonetheless. Only work 
and uh, he's only one who's going right back to what he's been doing. If this, you know, if him and Pete Dunn are still not going to be teaming up, he's going right back to what he's been doing. And in terms of this uh, triple threat battle royal, I mean, not battle royal, but this triple threat tag team match, I don't have an issue with it. I don't have an issue with it. You know, you could argue, you know, you could argue that since the tag team titles are vacant, they, you know, since that since the tag team titles are vacant, you could have had a tournament the crown new NXT tag team champions, but I think that would have been overkill. But I think that would have been overkill, quite frankly, especially since you just had the Dusty Classic in February. Mm-hmm. I think to do another tournament this close together would have been overkill. But you know, but I don't have a problem with the throw away. But I think I would have. To be honest, I think if I was in NXT shoes. I would have I would have pulled something from the AEW and I would have had a giant tag team battle royal at takeover to determine new NXT tag team champions. That's just me. But I don't have a problem with this three way. Three way should be excellent. And uh I think MSK uh are walking out tag team champions. No battle okay. ro- no battle royals, please. I, I can't stand battle royals. And we actually have a battle royal for next week, so Hooray, I guess. Uh, but Karrion Cross, he defeated Oni Lorcan in eight minutes with that elbow to the back of the head. Then after the match, he cut a promo. It was pretty short. And then he got interrupted by Finn Balor. And um, Balor is like, the way you're going to lose that takeover is your emotions. Your emotions is going to get the best of you. After, just like it got the best of you last week. And I'm gonna take care of your emotions, and I'm gonna. T- uh, he's gonna. T- he said he's gonna like take him somewhere, and he's gonna. He's gonna dig up, bury him, and something like that. I. But I'm not sure. Um. I don't really know how to feel about the build of this NXT Championship match. It's been. Good. I'm not gonna say it's been very good or great. It's been, good, to me. Um. It's the NXT Championship. But this does not feel it. I, I, you could agree with me. You could disagree with me. You could call me out on it. I, I really don't care. But uh, Balor and Cross does not feel like the main event of NXT TakeOver. Stand and deliver for Night 2 for me. Now it is the main event of Night 2. So kudos to them. I, I'm sure they're going to put on an awesome match. Because uh, it's TakeOver. It's Finn Balor. Who, who, who can possibly have a bad match against Finn Balor, but um, that to me, this does not feel like a main event of an NXT TakeOver. This feels like a co-main event. The spot that Kyle O'Reilly and, and Adam Cole are in. They should be in the main event, and this should be the co-main event. They did that in 2018 with Andrade and Black, where they were the match before Johnny and Champa, and Black won the championship that show. They could have done the same thing here, and I wouldn't have a problem with it. So, I, I and I know you agree with me on this because you said this last week. So, uh, you could say what you what you want about uh, the cross and Bert and uh, Oni Lorcan and then the segment afterwards. Uh, cross and Oni Lorcan. Uh, I thought uh, I was surprised at how one sided this was. Not not. I wasn't surprised that Kenny Cross got the win, but if anything, I was shocked. That only working was more playing babyface in this match rather than heel. I thought it, I thought the roles are going to be def- were going to be reversed. Or carrying across was going to be playing more of a babyface role, and you know, Lorcan would have been the heel. But so I, I'm not surprised that it was one sided in favor of Cross. I was just one just surprised it was one sided in terms of the match roles in this match. But yeah, okay, but yeah, but yeah, uh, I'm in agreement with you. I'm not feeling I'm not feeling this build. Uh, with with, oh, right, with uh, Balor and Cross, I'm just not. This build is not really. This build is not really doing it for me. I was not really a fan of the promo work between them last night. You know, I wasn't a fan of the promo work between them last night. And uh, yeah, I'm just. I'm not. This build up, I'm not feeling it. The match should be great. And, you know, I'm assuming this is the main event because we're going to get the demon. And, you know, because we're going to get the return of the demon. Uh, which is the only reason why I'm assuming that match is the main event, but I but I agree with you, man. This 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 I'm not feeling this bill. This this bill just isn't doing it for me. I'm telling you right now, the demon is not coming back at NXT Takeover. It's gonna be the Finn Balor we've seen since October of 2019 
against Karrion Cross, and Cross is probably going to win back the NXT Championship. So, be ready for that, folks. We I agree with you on that. I do think Cross is winning the NXT title, and I don't mean to interrupt you, but I think if Karrion Cross wins the NXT title, I think Karrion Cross. I'm gonna put an estimate on it. Either this year or next year, they're doing the baby. They're they're turning Karrion Cross babyface. Karrion Cross is gonna be the biggest babyface on this brand, outside of Kyle O'Reilly. No, I don't see that happening. But I have my ideas. But I I want to save that for when we do our uh, predictions for this particular takeover, because I'll have you on the channel for predictions for Stand and Deliver. I got a lot of ideas, but I, I think we all know at this point, uh, Karrion Cross is going to win the NXT Championship. We then had Drake Maverick against the NXT United Kingdom Champion, Walter. Um, this match, I, I used a stopwatch. This match went 23 seconds. Maverick hit a drop kick on Walter. Then Walter gave him a big clothesline. He power bombed him, which looked like a nasty beating. And then he put him in the Boston Crab and referee stopped the match. So Walter squashes Drake Maverick in 23 seconds. Thoughts on the match? Uh, I was. Uh, this is exactly what he should have been. I was praying for Drake Maverick. I'm not gonna lie. When I saw that Drake Maverick was facing Walter, I saw Drake Maverick was facing Walter. I was like, uh oh. And I said my prayers and everything because I said my prayers and everything because I thought for certain he was gonna get the shit chopped out of him. And you know that's one thing you cannot pay me to do is take a Walter chop. So uh, you know, let's take a Walter chop. But you know, but you know, luckily for him, he didn't get chopped. He just got he just got beat up by Walter. Uh, this is exactly what it should have been. And uh, my thoughts and prayers are with Drake Maverick. I know he's somewhere recovering right now from this long match with Walter. Uh, Drake Maverick, if you're listening to this man, uh, my thoughts and prayers are with you. Because I, I was praying for you. I was praying for you when I saw the graphic for this match. Yeah. So, after the match, uh, Champa's music hit. So, Tommaso Champa came out. He got right into Walter's face. And he said, listen, big man. I think you know why I'm out here. Last week I said, you intrigue me? Well, I'm going to take that back. That intrigues me. And he was talking about the NXT UK Championship. He said, that intrigues me. And I, sa I said, so how about you and me one-on-one -on -one at NXT TakeOver for the NXT UK Championship? And then after the match, Champa slaps the shit out of Walter. Uh, you have Bartel and Eichner attack Champa. Walter then lets the two Imperium guys hold Champa. He gives Champa a chop and then a power bomb. And there you have it, folks. Your uh, the night one. It's going to be on the USA Network. It's Tommaso Ciampa against Walter. Um, uh, this could be uh, the match I am looking forward to the entire week of WrestleMania week. The entire WrestleMania week. This might be the match I'm looking forward to the most. And I'm not even joking when I'm saying that. If this match, and I will say this again, so get used to this, folks. If this match has commercials in it, I'm going to lose my mind. On the NXT TakeOver Stand and Deliver review, I'm going to lose my mind if this match gets commercials. So this match is happening at TakeOver. Your thoughts on the Champa-Walter match happening April 7th? Uh, this is going to be just... I love, I love this match. I do. Now, logically... You know, now logically, I don't think it really makes any sense because Chamber hasn't really done anything to get a UK title shot. But he's not on NXT. But he's not on the NXT UK brand. He's just with NXT. So you know, you could argue that you know, so, you, know you could argue that he, you know, that it really doesn't make sense because he doesn't deserve a title shot. But at the same time, but I'm I'm looking forward to this. Chamber and Walter. 
I am looking forward to this. I think these two guys are going to go in there and they're going to beat the absolute shit and they're going to beat the absolute hell out of each other, which is going to be great. You know, which is going to be great. I wish Tommaso Ciampa would shave whatever he has on the top of his head. I wish yeah. he would shave it off. But, you know, I wish he would shave it off. But this Ciampa watching match is going to be off. It's going to be balls to the wall. And uh, everybody not be in commercials with it, man. I'm, agree- I'm, in- I'm in agreement with you. Even if they do the thing where they do picture in picture, I don't want picture in picture for this. I don't want, to want- I-, I don't want picture in picture. For this. I want 20 minutes of these guys going in there, beating the piss out of each other, and at the end of the day, Walter continues his Walter continues his dominant run as NXT UK champion. This match is going to be awesome. I'm telling you right now, this is easily going to be a match of the year. Is this the match you're looking forward to the most? Not just on Takeover, but the entire week of WrestleMania. Uh, it's one of the two. It's one of the two. It's either this or. It's either this or uh, Colin O'Reilly. Gotcha. But, but, yeah, but I am very much looking forward to this match. Absolutely, man. This is going to be uh, that is going to be an awesome match. I am really looking forward to that. We then had the NXT Women's Tag Team Title Match. Shotzi Blackheart and Ember Moon defending the titles against uh, Aaliyah and Mercedes Martinez. Poor Mercedes Martinez is direction directionless right now in NXT. This was a this was a this was a standard tag team match. A standard tag team match didn't really feel that big, even though the titles were on the line. Ember Moon hits the eclipse on the on uh, she hits the eclipse on Aaliyah for her and Shotzi to retain the titles. But you know the only way the only thing I got out of this that. We're probably going to get Shotzi and Ember against Indy Hartwell and Candice LeRae at TakeOver for the tag team titles. And we've seen this match already like twice or three times, I think. So why would I yeah, care? Yeah. I... No, go ahead, man. Oh, no, 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 no,
And then he rolled up Kushida. Beautiful roll up for the one, two, three. Uh, Kushida is pissed. He goes after Raul Mendoza and Joaquin Wild. Uh, Escobar and Jordan Devlin are standing in the ring together, staring at each other. And then HBK comes out. Shawn Michaels makes an appearance on NXT TV. He goes under the ring. He grabs a ladder. He throws it in the ring. And this is basically confirming that Santos Escobar and Jordan Devlin, night two of Stand and Deliver, is going to indeed be a ladder match. Should be fantastic, man. I think having Shawn Michaels coming out on this segment to make the Cruiserweight match, it makes it makes the Cruiserweight Championship feel important. It makes Devlin feel important because Shawn Michaels is a huge supporter of Jordan Devlin. And it makes Escobar feel important. So I am actually really looking forward to this match on night two. And I, I, I originally I would crap on this, but in this instance, I am okay because Shawn Michaels is a regular with NXT Creative. Go ahead, Cam. Uh, I'm in agreement with you, man. I love the fact that they have Shawn Michaels come out there, not just because he's a part of NXT Creative, but not just because he's a part of NXT Creative, but the whole storyline with Jordan Devlin and San Antonio Escobar is they're doing this so that way if there's one true Cruiserweight champion. If you remember, you know, if you remember Jordan Devlin won the Cruiserweight title, you know, won the Cruiserweight title back in, you know, won the Cruiserweight title back in 2020 before the pandemic hit. And then Jordan Devlin, who of course, who of course stays overseas, he wasn't going to be able to make it, so they crowned Santos Escobar as the Cruiserweight champion. And if you and, and you know, and if you're old enough, and if you're listening to this, this kind of remind you know, this reminds me of what they did back in you know back at WrestleMania 10 with the Sean you know with the Sean Razor lot of match. If you remember, Shawn Michael, if you remember, Shawn Michaels got in trouble. If you remember, Shawn Michaels got suspended for he got suspended for something, made a steroid something like that so they had a you know so they came up with a quick little better one and Shawn Michaels did not mail he refused to send the Intercontinental Championship back so this forced WWE so this forced WWE to come up with a quick little better one on Raw which Razor Ramon ended up winning and when Shawn Michaels came back that was already a ready-made story on there Shawn Michaels and Razor Ramon you know, we're going to put these two men in a ladder match, and there's only going to be one true, you know, there's going to be one true Intercontinental Champion. So I love the, you know, so I love the fact, so I love the fact that they had Shawn Michaels get involved here, you know, you know they had Shawn Michaels get involved here, you know, kind of play off that history with Dublin and, you know, with Dublin and Escobar. I think this match is going to be excellent. I think this is going to be an excellent match here. Uh, this is a ladder match. I'm looking forward to it. We really don't get a lot of ladder matches in the next team, so when they do do one, it feels special. And uh, I think this is going to be something great, man. Absolutely, man. I, I can't wait. And NXT... They always knock it out of the park when it comes to uh, ladder matches. So I'm looking forward to this one. But we have the card announced for uh, some of the card. Most of the card announced for night one and night two. On night one, we have a gauntlet eliminator. And the winner is going to challenge Johnny Gargano on night two for the North American Championship. Now, next week is going to be a battle royal. And I, 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 I don't know how they said it. They like said 12 men are going to be in the Battle Royal. And I think it's like the last six is going to finish off in a... Like, as, I, I don't know what it was. Something like the final six people are going to be in the Gauntlet at TakeOver. That's all that matters. So we have a Gauntlet Eliminator at TakeOver where the winner challenges Johnny Gargano for the North American title on night two. We have uh, the triple threat match for the tag team titles, MSK, Grizzled Young Veterans, and Legato Del Fantasma. We have the UK title with Tommaso Ciampa and Walter. And then we have Raquel Gonzalez and Io Shirai for the Women's Championship. And then on night two, we have 
uh, Johnny Gargano defending the North American title. We have Santos Escobar versus Jordan Devlin in a ladder match for the Cruiserweight title. And Finn Balor versus Karrion Cross for the NXT Championship. And there's another match announced for um, for TakeOver on Night 2. We are going to get to that right now. That is the contract signing between Kyle O'Reilly and Adam Cole. Um, this might have been my favorite con This might have been one of the best contract signings WWE has ever produced. This was awesome. Adam Cole was talking about how, how Kyle O'Reilly, you know, he thought Undisputed Era was full of brotherhood, and he's like, it's it's about who's the best, and I am the best. I carry the group. I started the group. I I am the one who was selling all the merchandise in 2018. I am all. I am the person who got us over. I am the reason why the Undisputed Era even existed. If I wasn't here in WWE. Or in NXT, there would be no undisputed error. And Kyle O'Reilly is just a follower. And he's like, at TakeOver, I, I am going to beat the hell out of you and teach you a damn lesson. And then Kyle O'Reilly gets the mic and he cuts an even better promo. And the line that got me was when he said, I gave my soul to the undisputed error and now I want it back. You kind of felt that a little bit to me. You kind of like felt that when Kyle O'Reilly said that line. And then he's like, we were the Undisputed Era to be a, the most dominant faction. Hold, hold all these championships. Be good people. And the only person who's not a good person is you, Adam. You're the same asshole who came into this company in 2017 and and then he signs the contract and then after Kyle O'Reilly throws the pen at Adam Cole and they both try to get at each other and you have the security guards holding back O'Reilly and Adam Cole who is wanting to absolutely beat the crap out of one another and now we are and then at the end on the WWE YouTube channel on an exclusive, they were still trying to get at each other. And O'Reilly was in the ring, and William Regal was, was was trying to separate them. And Adam Cole actually hit William Regal. He punched William Regal in the face. So, a chaotic ending to NXT. I, I, I don't even know how to describe this contract signing. It was... It was phenomenal. It was honestly one of the best contract signing signings I've seen in a in a very long time. And this segment right here actually sold the fact to me that this should be the main event of night one of TakeOver. I cannot express how much I love this. I absolutely love this. You got it, man. I'm gonna agree. I'm gonna this contract signing, uh, this was an excellent contract signing. Uh, this was an excellent contract signing. I love everything about it. I love, you know, I love the fact that we kind of had, you know, it kind of felt like these guys, it felt like these guys weren't scripted. It felt like, you know, it felt like these guys weren't scripted. It felt like Triple H, Road Dog, and Shawn Michaels just looked at him, Cole Kyler Riley, and just said, go out there and just shoot. And go out there and just shoot on each other for about a good, you know, go out there and shoot on each other uh, for about a good, you know, for about a good 10, 15 minutes. I love the fact, you know, you know, I love the fact that, Adam, you know, I love the fact that Adam Cole said, without me, there is no one spirit there. I'm the one that sold all the merchandise, did all this and did all that. And when you kind of think about it, that's kind of, and when you think about it, that's kind of true. That's kind of true when you think about it. You know, without Adam Cole, you know, without Adam Cole, is the Undisputed Era as successful as it is without Adam Cole being, you know, without Adam Cole being the leader and being the old, you know, without Adam Cole being the leader and being the focal point of it? I don't think it is. You know, I don't think it is as successful. So Adam Cole, uh, it felt like a shoot because Adam Cole, I think, was 100% right there. You know, I think was 100% right there. 
it's anyway, you know, then the fact that you had Kyle O'Reilly, uh, then the fact that you had Kyle O'Reilly, you know, then the fact that you had Kyle O'Reilly go in on Adam Cole. Uh, I love when WWE do, you know, I love when WWE does this. You know, I love when WWE does this. You know, they just let these guys go out there and they let them cut promos. When you're not overly scripted and everything, and you let these guys go out there and cut promos uh, from the heart, magic happens. And that's what, and that's what this was. This was magic. I love that these two men are, I love that these two men are brawling with you, you know, that these two men just want to beat the piss out of each other. Absolutely love that about the storyline. I love when storylines do that, by the way, when you have two guys who can't stand each other and all they want to do is just beat the piss out of each other. And, you know, they showed a, you know, they showed a video or Earlier, you know, they showed a video earlier this week on Twitter of Kyle O'Reilly in the gym, and you know, Kyle O'Reilly in the he, he was in the you know, of Kyle O'Reilly in the gym, and Adam Cole just walks in there, and Adam Cole just walks in there, uh, Kyle O'Reilly, and Adam Cole just walks in there. They just want to beat the piss out of each other, which I love when seconds, you know, I wish I love when they do that. It makes it makes everything they're doing feel more real, and you legitimately feel like these guys legitimately hate each other. Which I love. Uh, I thought the contract signing was great. Uh, I thought the contract signing was great. Uh, the match is now unsanctioned, and this should be the main event because if the match is unsanctioned, how do you? Because if the match is unsanctioned, how do you logically not have that match in the main event? You know, uh, you know, how do you logically not have an unsanctioned match in the main event? I don't know, man. It should be the main event, and it actually feels like main event. I know it's not on the same level. As Champa and Johnny Gargano, but let me tell you, man, if if this was in front of Full Sail University and this was in front of a packed crowd, I think Adam Cole would be getting lots and lots of heat, and it would be better for the rivalry. But man, I I I just really can't wait for Takeover. I can't wait for this match. Both nights looked incredibly stacked. I am probably going to watch the first night of NXT TakeOver over Dynamite that night. So I'm looking forward to it the week of WrestleMania. And folks, that wraps up the NXT review actually here today on the Big Fight Field channel. I want to thank each and every one of you who tuned in to the review today. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. We have a bunch of content. We got two more videos coming out for you this week. We have SmackDown tomorrow night, and then Sunday, we are going to end it off with the Big Fight Field Podcast. And then next week, we are going to have a fresh, full week of content here on the channel. Comment down below your thoughts on this week's episode of NXT. Let me know down below. Hit that like button. If you like what you heard from me in the video today, in the review, follow me on Twitter, at Colin underscore Joseph. Cameron, where can they follow you on Twitter, man? Uh, follow me on Twitter at KM7111. For at KM7111, I usually talk about wrestling and the NBA on there. So if that interests you, make sure you hit me up there. So if that interests you, make sure you hit me up there. And, uh, yeah, just make sure you follow me on Twitter. Uh, any last-minute words for yourself before we get out of here today? Uh, some last minute words. I just want to say, uh, some last minute words. I just want to say this. Uh, yeah, for some last minute words, I just want to say this. Uh, over on the CNE podcast, I had the privilege of interviewing. Uh, I had the privilege of interviewing ECW, uh, ECW and wrestling legend just incredible. Uh, just incredible. That uh, just incredible. That interview was up. That interview is up on all platforms. It's the C and E podcast. Just incredible as an app. He was a great guest. You know, he was a great guest. He talked about. You know, he was a great guest. He talked about what it's like working with ECW. He told some classic Pat Patterson, Vince McMahon stories from his time in WWE. Uh, he gave his thoughts on Thunder Rosa, Britt Baker, and I gave his thoughts on Thunder Rosa, Britt Baker, and what. And I gave this out from Thunder Rosa, Britt Baker, um, what advice he has for wrestler, you know, for current wrestler, you know, for current wrestler who's making it their way in the business. So make sure you check. So make sure you check out that interview with Justin Incredible. And uh, yeah, that does it. Make sure you go check that out. It's the interview with Justin Incredible, and go check out his podcast. And thanks for coming on, man. I will see you again next week. I uh, no problem, man. Uh, this is a lot of fun. Yes, sir. Have a good night, guys. Stay safe, and as always, stay classy.